I'm going to talk about microphones and unbox a couple that I got recently. So this here is an Octave. So it's a Russian microphone. So and it comes in um, this nice wooden box. And there we go. It's an Octave MK012 or, or MK12. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It has a mounting clip here. Although honestly, I would never use this just because. Oh, you go like that. <laughs> I will never use this because it's not a shock mount. So anyway, but I guess if you're mounting it up for recording some instruments or something, maybe it wouldn't matter. Anyway, and uh, here's the actual capsule, which is a hypercardioid capsule I got. Um, yeah, that screws on like that. And you've got the option here of, uh, that gives you a minus 10 dB pad if you're recording something really, really loud. Now, I thought I'd show the really cool thing. They have an individualized um, chart for each one for showing what their frequency response is. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, you can see these sort of lines were drawn out like that. Um, anyway, the, the Octave is pretty famous in sort of the low budget world as being um, one of the best super cheap options if you want to start off with a, a mic um, for indoors, a hypercalioid. And I think maybe, unless you find a really good bargain second hand, it probably doesn't deserve quite the same fame it does now in 2020 as it did perhaps back in, um, I don't know, what is it, the late, or maybe the early 2000s or something when people first started talking about it like, hey look, this is a really cool mic from, uh, from Russia. Um, the reason I guess is I think that from what, when I read about the prices they're going for back then, I mean partially there's been inflation that's gone in since since then um, but yeah it, it seems maybe their prices have crept up a little bit from like back in the early days but people still keep on talking about it and recommending it because it's still a, a solid choice but I just don't think it's maybe the amazing choice it might be and you've got lots of other choices to choose from from or or, or dear to Technica or, or Deity or um, or oil decks, I quite like my oil decks, or IKG, the blue line one, I've, I've got a couple of those. Um, but yeah, it, it just it's certainly one you should install if you're looking for a starter mic for hypercalorie or just an extra spare backup or one to use for plants or whatever. Um, yeah, it's definitely worthwhile keeping out eye out for it. Um, do be aware that I think there are Chinese fakes of these. And um, But yeah, um, enough about that one. Let's talk about the other mic that I... I'm going to be showing. Now when this arrived, I was looking at the box that came in and it was like, this is, says something about Raspberry Pi. I'm like, I didn't order any Raspberry Pi thingy stuff. Although I wish I had a Raspberry Pi. I've been thinking about buying that Raspberry Micro one for a while. Although it um, so sold out very quickly. Um, anyway. But no, it's just that the fact that, ah, just rip this. But it's just the fact that um, the, the seller just used this as a box to ship it in. It's always kind of cool and interesting seeing what random interesting boxes people reuse to ship stuff in. Um, in their case, yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi accessory. Now, this is, you see Electrosonics on the front. It's Electrosonics M140, because Electrosonics doesn't just make wireless. They also make a few lav mics as well that often come as um, the stock lavs that you can buy with Electrosonics kits or just extra, extra spares you can buy. Now, uh, why am I... I always struggle a little... I mean, I'm not quite this stupid, I swear. But I do struggle a little bit with the concept of trying to talk and look at the camera and fiddle with something. Oh, of course. Duh, doofus, idiot. Un unflick that. I really have great more respect for news presenters and so forth who uh, try to do stuff and without talking. So yeah, anyway, um, it has some accessories in here, like uh, that clip, and that will be a windshield. Um, you just slide over the lav, and these are empty ones to put in some new accessories, and that's another little alligator clip. Now, going back to show the mic itself. Here it is. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there's this thing here, it slides off easily, but that little tab thing just sort of slots down the side here, and there you go, back again, it's not working, it's all cool. Just 
pulse out. Anyway, um, right, it has the normal uh, um, five pin connection here for, for ultrasonics. Um, but look at the size of the mic itself. Look at how big that capsule is. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's smaller than my little finger, but not much smaller than my little finger. It is seriously a huge capsule. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought I was going to get it because of a very unique feature about this that most other lav mics are not. Because most lav mics are omnis. If you can read this, if it will actually go into focus for a second, you can see this here is a cardioid. So, not an omni. So yeah, now it's in focus. I can sort of show you. Uh, annoy, ignore my very dirty fingernails. You can see, um, yeah, just how big that is. Or if you compare it to the size of the, the connector, which you probably, everybody has one of these, you've got a sonics, you can see it's almost as big as the connector itself. It is a huge mic. So that is one reason why people would not normally get cardioid mics. The other reason is um, you don't actually really want them to be that directional because people, uh, when you put a lav mic on a person, it's stuck there. Well, hopefully it's stuck there. It might slip and fall down the person and, and, and uh, go out of place if it's not secure enough with the tape or they're really sweaty or if they move around to lock it in the scene. But yeah, the, it, it's a good thing if it sticks there and doesn't move around. Whereas if, you're, if you've got your boom mic come in, you know, what one of these, well, if you've actually got the capsule on it, you can move your boom mic around to follow the person and keep it perfectly on axis. So having a hypercardioid or a cardioid or even a, you know, a very narrow pickup shotgun, it's all fine when you're using a boom mic. You don't want that necessarily for lav mic because, you know, even with an omni, when a person turns their head to talk off and to the opposite side, it's already going, like, you can hear how it's going off axis. Um, um, and the other reason is, yeah, they're also bulky to hide. They also apparently pick up a lot more clothing rustle and handling noise, I've, or so I've been told. So yeah, cardio labs are not necessarily a good idea. But still, there might be some very small niche scenarios when you might want to use it. Maybe, you know, a person's going to be speaking at a podium, and they're just going to be talking straight ahead. They're not going to be turning their head either way. They're just going to talk straight ahead. And, um, and and maybe they're going to be in a very loud noise environment, so you want to just try to s squeeze a bit more out of it than an Omni. So yeah, there might be some specialized niche uses, although I think the main use I'll get out of this, other than simply the joy of like, oh, here's, here's a different toy to play with, I think the main <laughs> usage I'll get out of this will be as a plant lav, um, because I quite often you know, you, you plant mics or mics where you hide them in the scene somehow. So maybe there's a person talking here at the desk and you might just hide a mic. You know, you could hide maybe even a mic this big um, right behind something else like this where it's not going to be seen by the camera looking in this direction. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes you can't hide an XLR mic. You need, you need to hide something smaller or maybe you just simply can't ha you don't have space to deal with the cabling or some kind of phantom powering unit to use an XLR mic. So that's another reason why I might want to use a lav mic. Um, so, that, so when you're talking about plant mics, the difference in size between this really large capsule and the smaller normal capsules we use, even something really small like the Countryman ones that, that, that are barely bigger than a wire, it's not actually like that much of a big deal when you're going to be hiding them behind, you know, something else. Like if you want to just sort of hide it here or whatever, just inside the scene. But it'll also give you a bit more pickup because you often do have a general idea of, okay, the person's going to be sitting over there, so we can just sort of point it in that general direction. The person's not going to be sitting behind it. So we don't, so we don't necessarily need to use an Omni in those scenarios. So yeah, that's what I'm excited about using this for. Um, oh, I was going to show you one more thing. The Sonics M140 also comes along whenever it decides to focus. There we go. So you can see there, that's a cardioid pickup pattern. And it also shows its frequency response, just like the Octopha did. Except um, the Octopha is the unique one just for that one mic because it's been, ha not, well not hand drawn, I probably had a machine um, draw it with a pen. But yeah, it's been drawn in with a pen. Well, that's just been uh, printed, but uh, still pretty cool, pretty cool. And yeah, that's enough about this.
So there we go, two mics.